Hello everyone, my name is Christian. Welcome back to Tech Point today. Our guest is Nathan, the founder and CEO at Founder Suite. Hello. Hi, how are you? Fantastic. Nice to meet you. Please tell us what your company does. Yeah, so Founder Suite is a software platform for startups that are raising capital. So if you're a, a founder or a startup raising angel or venture capital, we make uh, a whole set of tools for doing that, including a database of investors, a CRM, pitch deck hosting, data room, pitch, de uh, pitch deck and investor updates, like email tools. It's a whole suite of tools for startup raising capital. Uh, what is the biggest problem that you solve for companies? The biggest pain point we solve is raising capital is very hard. It really is much harder than people think it's going to be. And, you know, 99.9% .9 of all founders have never done it before. So it's not like they really know what to do. Um, you know, so the problems we've solved are like figuring out the right set of investors to target. That's what the the database is helpful for managing the whole process. If you're raising capital, you're probably talking to 100, maybe 200, maybe even 400 different investors. And so that's where the CRM is really helpful to stay on top of all that stuff. And then the other tools like the data room are really useful for like managing all the documents that have to go, you know, in, during due diligence. So each tool kind of solves its own little problem, but overall the platform is helping solve the fact that raising capital is hard. And so we're trying to make it easier, more efficient. Do you call them tools or features? The CRM, the data room? You know, they are frankly either one. I mean, I call them tools because each one is a separate product, you know? I mean, they're all part of the same suite, but each one is a separate tool. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, kind of, kind of either one, whatever you want. <laughs> okay, I love to hear your favorite success story of a happy customer, somebody that came to your platform and you helped them raise more, or uh, yeah, some example. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'll, 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 I mean, saying that is sort of like asking someone to tell, tell me who your favorite child is if you have more than one kids, right? Because we like them all. But one I just got off the call with like thirty minutes ago. A uh, guy named Brian and his company is called Join Loop. And it's basically like a, um, his pitch. I'm probably not going to do his pitch very well, but it's like a digital photo frame that also has kind of a social network attached to it. So you can put up this photo frame and have, you know, different social feeds of photographs coming to it. And it's really cool. And he's been a customer for quite a while. And he's raised over $8 million. And, and now he's going back to raise some more. And it's just fun to see his business kind of go from idea into a really early product into, you know, a growth story. And and his fundraising skill has yes. actually gotten better, too. I've watched him get better and better. And I think we're going to have him on our podcast to feature him because now he really has a lot of knowledge about how to raise capital in different stages of a business. So there's one example. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. And I guess your podcast is about helping uh, other founders uh, raise. Yeah, our podcast is called How I Raised It. And it's okay. interviews <laughs> with founders on how they raised their rounds. We also have some interviews with uh, VCs and some some specialty people like communication coaches, pitch coaches, things like that on there too. So yeah, it's, it's fun. <laughs> Super smart. And what is the pricing for uh, Founder Suite? Better Suite is two, well, three plans actually. There's a free version that's free forever, doesn't have all the features, but it has some basic stuff. People have actually raised capital on the free plan, so it's not okay. a completely okay. useless plan. And then the next plan up is $49, and then the top one is $69. We're actually going to be pretty soon adding a, a, a another plan a platinum plan so we're going to add one more plan on top of that that will have some some interesting stuff in it but basically it's 49 dollars or 69 dollars per month depending on some features okay and i'm really curious to know is this a competitive space it it well it is now it when we started we've been around over six years seven years i guess okay um 
it and we were like the originals and there was no one else doing this or pretty much no one else doing this very few people now there's a new company that's like sprouting up every other week so it's become competitive yeah for sure so you started this six years six years ago but uh, what do you think uh, makes you different from the competition i mean oh that's great i mean i could go you could almost answer that in a couple different ways i could answer that on like a feature by feature product matrix question okay okay there's that answer but then there's also i think the answer i prefer which is more you know i used to raise capital for startups it's all i've done for kind of my entire career like the way we've built this platform it's very much how fundraising works in the real world you know what i mean it's not theoretical it's like we're in the trenches we're talking to our customers every day learning what they're doing i mean that's one of the cool things about the podcast too we're not only do we get to to put it out there interview people but we're talking to people how they raised capital and so we're like continuously learning about new ways to raise capital and some of that goes back into the product so i i know that's a little bit of a fuzzy answer but i'd say it's just because we're we live breathe eat sleep fundraising and i think that shows up in the product and how it's built and how we how we are doing things so have have we also raised money for the founder suite yeah we have we have we raised from a venture fund ffvc out of new york and then uh, a bunch of angel investors we haven't actually raised that much kind of ironic given that we sell software for raising capital we haven't raised too much ourselves but we haven't actually needed to raise too much so that's kind of nice it's better than being bootstrapped and the selling software for uh, raising but uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> anyway um I-, i love to hear how many people are there at your company we're up to i want to say around 30 people now um we have a engineering team that's gotten larger we now have a pretty big size data data team so part of the hard part of my work is keeping our investor database updated um so we've got a really good data data team now and then we started to bring on some sales people which we never had before so <laughs> that's that's new okay and i lo- i love to hear the story of both companies because you are the founder and ceo at the two companies right founder suite and also funding stack so please tell us the the story behind that yeah so so it's it's all a kind of a linear story like i was working in investment banking helping companies raise capital then okay. went off on my own with a couple of friends mm-hmm. and we had our own little consulting business helping companies raise capital and we did that for a decade like the 2000s and then had this idea in kind of mid 2010s whatever maybe 2015 2014 somewhere around there like hey we're working with all these startups helping them raise capital we're doing this all in like spreadsheets and you know using a bunch of different tools like sales crms that aren't really designed for this so why don't we build a platform for this right no one's really done this why isn't there software for raising capital you know um and so we started building this and and put out our first product which was the investor crm and then mm-hmm. we've just been adding about one or two new features or tools per year we kind of been growing it up so that was how what created founder suite and then okay. and that was used by startups and and we have we've had like 34 i, I think we're up to like 50,000 but the last time we did a a big search we had about 34,000 startups that that were using it and then oh wow. uh, and i'm sure we're much more than that now cuz that that was a while ago but anyway we started to get some venture funds and also some investment bankers using this with their clients and so they'd be like hey you I'm working with my my portfolio company in Founder Suite this is really cool I like it how do I I've got four other portfolio companies so how do I work with them and we're like well uh <laughs> let's think about that and so we actually built a version for investment bankers and VCs and then we spun that out just a few months ago in April of this year or on Easter um and we called that funding stack so we launched a separate platform for funding stack really to just serve this other customer base that was kind of 
coming onto Founder Suite, but we didn't have a perfect product for them, so we built a a product just for them. Well, well, makes total sense. And it's two separate companies, or is it part of the same uh, company? Actually, part of the same company, two separate platforms. So they are separate, you know, totally separate platforms, but they're all under the same corporate uh, umbrella. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I, I know some companies have on their pricing page have that switch, let's say, and they say for uh, teams, for individuals, or maybe you could have done for investors and for uh, founders. But why did they decide to build a new product from, from scratch? Yeah, no, it's a good question. It's a great question. We we actually did. So we first launched that uh, product under Founder Suite. It was called Agent Model. It was kind of like a separate pro- or a special product. Okay. And that's fine. And that worked out well. And we had a couple hundred uh, investment bankers and VCs using it. The reason we decided to spin it out into its own platform is, frankly, the products are different. Like, there's more, um, you know, we could keep them under the same umbrella. But the the products are actually going to kind of diverge a little bit over time. The database is separate. The databases are, you know... VCs and investment bankers need more LP investors, yeah. FMFs. So, so the database is going to kind of gradually move apart. And frankly, also just the branding, the the marketing and the branding. You mm-hmm. know, these are different yes. different people. They're actually quite c- kind of different in terms of like what they care about. Um, even the language we use, even the the salespeople we use, have to have a certain. Uh, how do I put this? A little bit more sophisticated on the investment banking and funding side, right? Versus the startup side, you know, founders are a little, uh, I don't want to say unsophisticated because founders are very <laughs> sophisticated, but there, there's a different Pragmatic, level of, yeah. kind of, you know, attitude. Direct to the point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. M- makes, uh, makes sense. Thank you for sharing. I really appreciate the transparency. Uh, maybe a quick follow-up question. Do you think that in the future you can sell a uh, funding stack from just funding stack, for example, uh, the way you organized it right now? Was this uh, in your mind as well when you decided to switch? Uh, you mean sell the, the business or sell just the yeah, product? Yeah, j- j- just the product, let's say, as a, as a separate business. Yeah, um, well, we are trying to keep them separate. I mean, we're trying to really kind of, again, I keep using, if people are just listening, they don't, won't know what I'm doing. I'm using my hands that are going like, out from each other because they kind of started in the same <laughs> place, but they're sort of, you know, going off on slightly different paths. So, and I think that will increase over time. And so, you know, it's going to just, there's a lot of features that investment bankers want or VCs want that founders don't need, right? And founders have their own specific things, even just as simple as founders are more interested in having a large up-to-date angel database VCs are looking for LP database. I mean, it's just like things like that that are kind of separate and and why we're selling them differently. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what is your biggest challenge since uh, starting Founder Suite? Oh gosh, there's just every day is a new one. It's kind of like what, <laughs> you know, ask me, ask me right now. Ask me half an hour ago. It'll be different challenges. Startups are just so hard. I mean, we've run out of money, not recently, but like in the early years, you know, we like ran out of money. We lost people. We went like a few months without an engineering team. I could tell all kinds of stories from the first like two years or three years. Those first two or three years of any startup are just a total uh, one after another, a series of like pitfalls and traps and, you know, deadly it's kind of like indiana jones in the temple of doom do you remember that (laughs) first it's the poison darts coming out and then it's the the snakes and then it's the rolling big giant rolling stone that's trying to kill you (laughs) it's kind of like that with startups right every five minutes there's a new thing that's trying to kill you as a startup um keeping people on board you know keeping customers happy when you don't have like much of a customer support team (laughs) um (laughs) Biggest challenge, though, I mean, I think with anything is like getting customers on, keeping them on, making them happy, and and doing that all cost efficiently, right? Because startups aren't willing to pay a lot of money for anything, more or less, you know? And so you've got to acquire customers 
pretty affordably. That's always been a challenge. How do we get customers without spending lots of money to get them? So, yeah. Maybe a cliche question, but uh, I see you super happy and smiling. What is the secret to your uh, enthusiasm? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I know this sounds totally corny, cliche, like you say. Yeah. <laughs> I, I tell people this all the time. I talk to founders all the time and and they're like, oh yeah, I'm going to launch this logistics analytics business. I'm like, oh, interesting. Do you come from that? Is this like something you really care about? And they're like, not really, but I just see an opportunity here. Like, I can kind of tell you that most of those people are going to fail because you have to just love what you're doing, whether it's, you know, like Brian of this join loop that I mentioned a few minutes ago, you know, he's creating like this social network for families and tightening these, strengthening these bonds with families. Like it's, it's cool. It's a mission. It's a passion. Um, and so I guess to answer your question directly, I love working with startups. I love working with founders. And so I have a great job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So, I'm super happy for you. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I love to hear how you found your first customers. Well, we did some interesting things in the early days. Um, actually, my favorite, I wouldn't call it a hack so much, but one of our first early fun growth hacks is we were we started putting on some events and we would, uh, I think we call them Startup Funding 2.0, right? That was the title of our event. And we would get a couple investors to come speak and and then we would first we would recruit some investors say hey we want you to come speak we're going to do a panel panel session fireside chat etc cetera, etc cetera. and then we would use those name brand investors to to lure in you know 100 i think our biggest event was like 400 people all founders and and so then we would have this audience of five or six investors and say 200 founders all in a room and guess what guess who gets to be the mc of this i do and of course i get to mention you know founder suite and stuff like that and put up a slide and here's a discount code promo code like that was actually really fun because we had this captive audience of people who were there obviously about fundraising because that's why they came so it's a perfect audience they're getting value and some of them turned into customers. So it was a nice way to like acquire customers. And actually they were paying us because they'd pay us 25 bucks for a ticket to come to the event. So that was kind okay. of my favorite one. Yeah. Great story. Thank, thank you for sharing. And today, what is your most successful go-to-market strategy for getting what new customers? Most what? Successful go-to-market strategy. You know, there we don't have any one go-to-market that is just like, the beast you know we have a lot of like small beasts <laughs> um we have a podcast podcast is fun it's free cheap it's easy to produce doesn't cost much and you know that gets a lot of word out there we also take some of that content and we'll turn it into blog posts we'll turn them into guest articles and so that's also a pretty cheap way of of you know driving customer acquisition i mean we pay some money on facebook and google ads we don't I want to say we're spending like a thousand bucks a month or maybe it's not very much. Maybe it's like a thousand dollars a month on, on paid ads. It's it, it performs well enough that we keep it on, but it's not like this thing where we just want to like <laughs> yes. crank it up, you know? Um, and we, we've tried to do like viral loops. Like we've done little incentives like, Hey, you're a founder, tell two founders and you get a, a free discount or something that's worked. But it, I think maybe we didn't have the right, there's probably a platform out there, like a software platform that manages that really well. And we haven't discovered it yet. If, if you're out there, let us know, but that, that helps, right? Have a little viral loop in the product. Um, and then some cold, we do some cold outbound stuff. Um, you know, there's a lot of startups out there, new ones starting every day. And so we try and identify them and reach out to them. So those are our biggest engines, I'd say. Okay. And in terms of vision, uh, what is the vision for the future of the company? Where do you see it? 
You know, there's a lot of opportunity. We still have a lot of work to do, I guess. Um, making raising capital easier is our biggest mission, right? And so the vision is just keep doing that, right? And there's more tools we can build, more products. Um, if I think about, if I think about it, I think of it kind of on a on a timeline, right? When you when you first start to raise capital, your biggest pain point is identifying the right investors. And then that's our database, right? And then, you know, then managing the whole process. That's where the CRM comes in. Managing the communications. That's where the investor updates uh, come in and and the email tools. Getting through due diligence. That's where the data room comes in. But then even beyond that, there's a lot of stuff we can do to keep founders engaged with their investors, um, you know, getting them making it easy for their next round, right? If there, There's even just a lot of pain to be solved in identifying the right investors. So we're building out different ways to search our database to make it easier for you to find that perfect list of 200 investors. Out of all 200,000 investors in the database, how do you identify the 200 that are like bullseye, right? That's That's hard. It's still hard even today. So we have a lot of work to do around that, making things just easier. And you mentioned that a lot of uh, free users managed to raise funding uh, through your platform. Uh, did they use the database or do they uh, raise their connection and they just import their CRM? Little both, little both. Because on the free plan, you... Excuse me. <coughs> Pardon me. On the free plan, you can search the database, but we don't give you full access to it. So... A lot of those free users who raise money often had their own investors and were maybe using the other tools. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, I love to hear how you started your career right after uh, finishing school. Yeah, well, that's that's the funny part is I went right into investment banking. So I was starting to help companies raise capital. And that's kind of what I've done my, my whole career. So it's a very... Um, I almost think of like my dad knew when he was young, he wanted to be a doctor and he became a doctor and he spent his whole career as a doctor. It's a very kind of boring story in some way. <laughs> it's a little bit yes. like that. Like I love yeah. startups, I love capital raise and that's kind of what I've done the whole time. But still it's, it's unique and probably one of the best jobs in the world, as you said, <laughs> working yeah. with so many founders. Uh, speaking of that, what's your best piece of advice for a starting founder? You know, it kind of goes back to something I mentioned, like, don't just look for what you think is going to, like, get you rich, but, like, find something that you really love, because, and I say that because, like I said, founders founders are, are, are going to get beat up constantly, you're going to get rejected, it's just so hard to actually get a startup off the ground and make it a success, and if you don't really love what you're doing you're going to quit when it gets bumpy and tough right so but if you find what you really love like nothing can stop you i know this is very cliche but if you really love what you're doing nothing can stop you even if you're you know told no a thousand times even if you run out of money and have to keep bootstrapping or whatever it may be if you really love it it's you're gonna push that rock up the hill and get it to the top some of the best principles are right in front of us and uh, still yeah. people don't apply it. So I think that's, that's the case. Everybody knows it, but uh, yeah. Um, okay, I have one last question to you. What What's your favorite uh, software product that you use apart from your two products? <laughs> apart from our own product? Yes. I, this is not super clever or original. But I actually really like Intercom. Intercom is what we use for for our customer support and customer chat, and and it's it's pretty cool. You can do a lot with it, you know, in terms of like not only responding to people, but kind of semi automating a lot of the support stuff, onboarding tours. It's kind of a great way to connect with our customers. And so I spend a lot of time in Intercom chatting with and connecting with customers because I still feel that's like job number one, most important job, right? So I like that. Absolutely. Is there anything else that you want to tell us on today's podcast? 
I don't think so. If you're raising capital, you know, I guess my, my quick little plug is obviously check out foundersuite.com. Um, check out the podcast, How I Raised It, on iTunes and Spotify and all the other usual places, also on YouTube. And then uh, if you want to con- connect on LinkedIn, we actually publish, I have a, a, a team doing this. It's not always me, but we publish a lot of stuff on LinkedIn, a lot of great like giveaways, like pitch deck templates and lists of investors, top female angels. You know, we do all these different lists and stuff that we give away on LinkedIn. So um, connect with me, Nathan Becker, B-E-C-K-O-R-D. Maybe mention you saw it on the Tech Pond podcast. That'd be great. And uh, happy to connect. And yeah, that, that'd be it. Thank you very much, Nathan. You did fantastic. And I really enjoyed our conversation. I'm grateful. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much.